Today, we're going to dive into Lucas Studio for SEO and how you can turn your Google search and JData from this into this SEO dashboard using Lucas Studio. Hey friends, Grace here. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. This is a channel where I share digital growth tips and strategies that are actionable and getting results. Now, let's get started. In case you don't have any idea about Lucas Studio, it is a free data visualization tool helping you to present the data in a way that helps better storytelling. But before you can start using Lucas Studio, make sure you have registered an account. Now, once you're on Lucas Studio, click to create a blank report. Then we're going to first add the Google Search Console data source to this report. Select your web property, then the table site impressions and add to the report. Then repeat the same process by clicking Add Data. But this time, select and add the URL impression table instead, as we also need this table data to build a dashboard. Now we have add the search console data, then also add the J4 data by selecting the J4 data connector. Authorize the connection, then select your J4 account and property. Now we are ready to add the data. The first thing you're going to add is the performance overview. So usually the most important metrics to include are your organic traffic, clicks, impressions, CTR, and conversions from organic channel, depending on your business and how they compare over time. Let's first pick a theme and layout. Then click layout. Let's use 16 to 9 ratio landscape and give a title called as your performance dashboard and then add a day range control so you can select particular day range to pull specific data. Click on it and configure it to show last year. Then let's add a background to make it more organized. Now let's add all the important metrics we want to include in the dashboard. So usually your search performance from Search Console and also the traffic data from GA as I mentioned. And assume you also have an online business, you may include revenue performance as well. Let's add all the labels first, which are organic impression, organic clicks, CTR percentage, organic traffic, organic transaction, organic revenue. And then we're going to start adding the data and we will use the scorecard component. Click add a chart and select scorecard without compact numbers. Click on the data and we can configure the data source. On the setup tab, make sure it is the correct data source. That is Google Search Console data for URL. Select the right matrix, that's the impression, and we're gonna add the comparison percentage label so we can compare with the previous period. And then you will see the percentage is shown under the metric. On the style tab, click high metric name so we will use our own custom labels. Now for the rest of the metrics, we'll use the same method to add the data. So let's add all the data. Usually what I do is to just copy and paste them all at once and then change the data source and metrics one by one. So make the process much faster. For the traffic and conversion data, remember to select the right data source that is JData. And also, since we're gonna show only the data from organic channel, we'll need to create a custom filter. For example, for organic traffic, click add a filter on the scorecard filter and name it as organic search. And then search for section default channel grouping and filter only sections that contain organic search. And note it is case sensitive and so we can replicate the same traffic data as in J4. And then do the same for the organic transaction and revenue and update the metrics and add the organic search filter we have just created. And now we're gonna add two charts. So one is the impressions versus click over time. Another one is the organic sessions versus total session over time so that we can see how the organic traffic grows over time against the total. Now click add a chart and select combo charts. Select the date in a dimension and impressions and your clicks for the metrics to be shown. Now we'll see it break down the data period into weeks. And if we want to display it as a whole month, then toggle the drawdown under the dimension, remove year and day, and then just leaving the year month. And then we'll see it group the data into months. It's not done yet. On the shorting, click year month and ascending. So it shows the correct timeline and now click the style tape. So in this chart, series two represent the URL clicks and mark the access to the right and click show data points for both metric lines so we can see the numbers showing on the chart. Remember to also add the title to this chart. Let's say impressions versus click. And now let's add a traffic chart. Again, click add a chart, then select smooth line chart. On the configuration panel, we can select the J4 data source as the data is pulled from GA. Then select year month in the dimension, 
and then select section under the metric. We're going to change the name to total sections because later on we'll also add the organic section just to better distinguish them. So we get the total section chart and now here comes the tricky part because we also need to add the organic traffic line in the same chart. We will need to create another chart first with the filter turn on and to blame the data into the new chart. I hope you guys are still following me by now. So now just copy this chart, put it somewhere. It doesn't matter as we'll delete it soon once we blend the data. And we're going to turn on the organic search filter for this chart and change the metric name to organic sections. And now select the total section chart and then the organic section chart. Right click blend data. Then we move the two original charts just to make it less messy. For the dimension, change it back to year month first and select year month under sorting with ascending. And now we'll see there are two data lines. One is the total section, another is the organic section. And then go to the style tape, change them to line charts and to show the data labels. And now we're done. And don't forget to add the chart title. There's still other charts that you can add. For example, the channel proportion of organic versus other channels like social media, pay ads, or you can add a light graph showing how the conversions from organic progress with the total conversions. So take some time to think about your reporting needs. What metrics that weighs the most importance for your business or client situations before you start building the dashboard. And this way you can convey a better storytelling that pinpoint the most important insights from a dashboard quickly. And now let's move on to the keyword tracking dashboard. A good keyword tracking dashboard should show you the list of ranked keywords for a website, how many of them, the impressions, the clicks and position for the specified period and how they compare with the previous performance. And I'll also show you how you can set up different keyword ranking groups and keyword types in a minute. And oftentimes we also track the branded versus non-brand keywords, or perhaps you have specific keywords to track. For example, product keywords, category keywords, if you're running a e-commerce business. So now we're going to add a custom drop down filter called keyword type to this report and it will be very useful. Now let's add a new page and we're going to copy the same dashboard title and day range control on this page. Now let's name it organic keyword performance and then add a chart, select the table with heat map. So this chart format allows us to display the data in table format and highlight them with a heat map feature. Again, on the configure panel, select the right data source. That's the search console data for a website. Pick the query under the dimension and add impressions, clicks, average position as the metrics. Select show summary row. And now you're going to see the data is displayed with the heat map format. We're going to shot it using impression and then use the clicks as the secondary shotting. Since we also want to compare performance, so make sure to check the compare checkbox with the previous period for all the three metrics. However, note that for the average position, we'll just show the absolute change rather than the percentage. Now click add a control, then select drop down list. Since this demo data source won't allow me to create a new field, so I'm gonna use the real data just to demonstrate how you can create this calculated field because it's super useful. Under the data source, and click new field at the bottom. Click add new calculated field. We'll name it as the keyword type and input this formula. So basically what it does is to return the list of query that match the tags you specify. And so in this case, if query contain Google, then it's branded and otherwise we'll label them as non-branded keywords. But however, you can always modify it depending on your own situation. And so we'll create two labels called branded and non-branded. Now click save. Now we move the default control field and select the newly created field keyword type. And now we'll see the filters are made. Another control I'll use is the advanced filter. So what it does is allowing you to search for specific tags within your query. Select contains as the search type. And now you can search for specific queries like Chrome and that it will return the list of relevant random keywords. If you want, you can even create different tables for different types of keywords if they are important to your business. For example, what I usually do in the past is to show different tables by branded keywords, informational keywords, product keywords, so that I can spot them so quickly without even using a filter. You can also track the number of branded keywords so that you can see if the total number of branded keywords are growing. And now we're not done yet. If you want to stick a step further, 
Alberta. You can even group different random keywords based on the position. So top three, position four to 10, position 11 to 20. And you need to create a new field for the keyword ranking group. It's a bit tricky here, but I will show you in a minute. What we need to do is to do a self blame data before we can add a calculated field for the keyword ranking group and show all these metrics. Now let's do it. So go to resource and manage blame. Click add a blame. Select the Search Console data source for website. We'll use the data and query as the dimension as we want to show the growth for different ranking groups over time. Then add another table. Add the same Search Console data source and this time also add all the key metrics. For example, average position, clicks, impression, size CTR as we may also need them to build a dashboard. And configure the type to be full outer which means that we're gonna match all the roles. Name as keyword rank blank data, then add the stacked area chart from the menu. Select the blank data that we just create as the data source. For the metrics, select query from table one as we want to show how many queries for that ranking group. And now the trick here is to create different keyword ranking groups under the breakdown dimension. Add a new field and use this formula. So what it does is to check the average position and assign them into different keyword groups. So for example, we'll group them into top three, top 10, top 20, and page two onwards. Name the field as keyword rank group, and then click apply. And see, that will be super useful to track all your rank keywords, and it's so easy to spot the trend. And now also click a scorecard components for the total number of rank keywords. Select the same blended data source and pick query as the metric. Check compare with the previous period, and now you can easily keep track of the total number of rank keywords and how the performance compare with the previous period. Now we will add another page for tracking the high performing landing page from SEO. The goal for this report is to track the top landing page that got the most impressions and clicks and how the performance compare with the previous period. Now insert a new page. Again, copy all the header, date control, and all the formatting to this page. And then insert a new header. Again, we will add a new chart using the table with heat map. Since we're pulling the data for landing page, we're gonna use the search console data for URL as the data source. And then change the dimension to landing page and adding metrics for impressions, URL clicks, URL CTR, and check show summary role. And then change to short by impressions in order to show the most popular landing page by default. And secondary short by URL clicks. We also gonna add compare to show the percentage growth. So now we can easily spot any popular landing page in terms of the impressions that they got and we can prioritize based on the click performance where we can further investigate to improve the matter or content for these pages. Again, we can also add the advanced control group to facilitate the filtering option just like the keyword tracking dashboard. Now add the advanced filter control group and select contains in the search type. And depending on your reporting needs, you can further create other useful filters, for example, the page type, if that's a blog page, a product page, or category page. And also you can add more light charts to show different page type and how they contribute to the overall search traffic performance over time, so that you can easily spot the growth trend for a particular page type when they start picking up and when they start declining. Another bonus tip here is you can also integrate with JData to show the commercial performance from these top landing page. So you're not just comparing the traffic performance, but also the conversions. There's still so many ways in leveraging Lucas Studio in your marketing reporting, and it's just one of the use case to apply in SEO. And it can also be used in other marketing channel reporting as well, like PPC, social media, Google My Business. So you can use it to pinpoint the most important insights for your business or clients quickly. If you're facing any digital growth challenges where I can help, feel free to connect with me. You can find the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, please also give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.